One, I just discovered a few years ago that I remember a paraplegic cousin that no one else in my very large family remembers. My mother had a cousin named Lily, who was married to a man named Dean, who were both older than my mom but younger than my grandparents. They had adult children who were younger than my mom but older than me. They always lived far from us, and I didn't even know of their existence until I was 12 or 13, when they happened to buy a home just a couple of miles from us. After they had lived there a couple years, we then moved away, and I didn't see them again until I was in my 30s. And then only that one time the rest of my life. When I was a child, Lily and Dean had three sons in their late 20s, whose names I don't remember. And their youngest child was a daughter named Kathy, who was 19 or 20 to my 13. The reason Lily and Dean bought this particular house near us, instead of another in the same neighborhood, is because this house had been modified by the previous owner for the previous owner's wheelchair. One of Lily and Dean's sons was paraplegic. The house had lower kitchen counters that Lily liked, because she was so small, and wheelchair ramps and special bathrooms. We spent a lot of time there during the two years we lived near each other. I only met their paraplegic son once, and I don't remember his name or the other two brothers that I never met, though I know one is named Dean Jr. I do remember it was the late 1970s and he had long hair and a bushy beard and unbuttoned his shirt too far, as was the style in the 1970s, and he was very, very, very hairy. When I found out the details of the car accident that severed his spinal cord, I went to the library trying to research ways that he could be healed. His parents were very touched by my trying to figure out a way to make him better. Years later, when I was in college, I watched a spinal cord injury documentary for some class and brought him up in the discussion that followed. Years after that, his sister Kathy died in her 30s of a bizarre illness, and I felt so bad for Lily and Dean. They were such wonderful people, and now they had the double tragedy of their son being crippled in an accident and then outliving their youngest child, who was their only daughter. I thought it was weird that the paraplegic son wasn't at the funeral, but everyone was so upset that day that I didn't want to bring it up. Many years after that, Lily and Dean died within a few days of each other of very old age. I wasn't able to make it to the funeral. When our mutual cousins who grew up with Lily and Dean's kids and were close to that family were telling me about the funeral, I asked if the paraplegic son was there and what his name was as I couldn't remember. Everyone looked at me like I was crazy, and the more I described him, the crazier I looked to everyone. My older brother does remember the wheelchair-modified house, but nobody remembers the paraplegic cousin. We all know that there were four kids in that family, Kathy and her three older brothers. Apparently, the three brothers are all able-bodied, so it's like I remember a different version of one of them. The thing is... I have multiple memories of talking about him with my mom, and also with my mom and his parents. I remember stories his mom told us about him. It's not like I'm thinking of a one-time thing and misremembering it. I'm in my fifties now, and everyone who would have been there those two years when they lived near us is now deceased. There is no one to verify my memories. This all came up again this week when Lillian Dean's granddaughter contacted me on... 23andme.com I thought she'd obviously remember, since this would be her uncle or dad. Nope. 2. Following the rule that we ought to consider more likely explanations before posting, I'll say that most likely I'm crazy. But I don't really think so. Mostly I want to know if anyone else is seeing the same things I am. Glitches is the right explanation. They started right around election time, November 2016. Or I just started noticing them then. I have a theory that was when this particular save instance was loaded. But my theories are more for fun than answers. I doubt I'll ever get any answers beyond being told I'm crazy. But maybe this subreddit will be helpful. The first glitch that I would actually call a glitch happened while I was driving. 
I looked in my rearview mirror and the car behind me glitched between lanes. There's no other word for it than glitch. It looked like a graphics mess up. And it wasn't a matter of me looking away then glancing back and the car had moved. I watched this happen. I've seen similar glitches around the world. If anyone has played the Talos Principle, it looks kinda like those environmental glitches. The feeling it brings about is 100% the same, and freaked me the frack out when I first played the game because it was so similar to what I've been experiencing. Though I experience it significantly less often, of course. I have countless stories of dreams happening later, but I'll just tell you the most recent and bizarre. Several months ago, maybe a year ago, I had a dream that I was at a graduation, and a mariachi band came out and I was like, that's really weird, having a mariachi band at a graduation. Last month we went to my brother-in-law's graduation in New Mexico, a graduation I didn't know was coming up when I had my dream. And guess who played us out of the auditorium? A flippin' mariachi band. My theory on dreams that happen later is that you have the dream when the conditions are met for the scene to play later. Last is the tiling. I've seen it a few times, sometimes in clouds but usually in long grass. The tiling along the runways of our local airport is so obvious, I am surprised nobody else has pointed it out. Personally, I think airports are the best places to see it, because you move real fast and you can confirm it based on the effect that makes wheel spokes look like they're moving slowly in the opposite direction, and get up high which makes the pattern easier to see. What none of this explains is why I notice these things at all. Shouldn't they disappear from my comprehension, since I'm part of the same system as everything else? Or is it breaking down somehow? See? Most likely I'm crazy. 3. I'm not a superstitious person. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in a god. I don't believe in an afterlife. If I can't see it, or science can't prove it, I don't buy it. At the time, I was aware of the concept of lucid dreaming, but had never experienced one. This happened several years ago, so I don't remember the exact details of where I was sleeping. But I know that I was either at home or at my girlfriend's house. I also remember that it was a Sunday night. Professionally, I'm an occupational therapist at an inpatient subacute rehabilitation center. Basically, this means that my patients stay at the rehab center for a couple weeks to a couple months before returning to the community. In my dream, I'm at work. More specifically, I'm entering the physical therapy gym. The PT gym in my dream was an accurate depiction of the PT gym that I work in. In dreams, at least in my dreams, I will know that I'm at a certain location, but upon waking, I will realize that the layout of the location wasn't true to life i.e. in my dream, I'll just know that I'm at my apartment, but it will be a different building completely, or major details will be different than reality. I hope that makes sense, because it was a large part of why this experience was so unsettling. As I walk into the gym, I glance to my right and see one of my patients. We exchange hellos and I tell her that I'll be with her in a moment. I walk to the left, toward the restroom. When I enter the restroom, I look in the mirror and notice an unfamiliar tattoo on my chest. It occurs to me that this is strange because I don't have a tattoo on my chest. For whatever reason, during the dream, it did not occur to me that it was odd to be at work with no shirt on. I guess I'm startled a bit and glance up at my face. Only I don't have a face or a head, just a rounded knob that is my neck. At this moment, I realize that I'm dreaming. Thoughts flood my mind, but one sticks out. What do they say you should do if you find yourself in a lucid dream? They say you should try to fly. Unfortunately, I don't know how to fly. I begin drifting up slowly and backwards toward the center of the bathroom. When I hit the corner of the wall and ceiling, I experience a sudden, overwhelming, claustrophobic feeling. The lights in the bathroom switch off with a loud bang, and I wake up. I feel very anxious and mildly overwhelmed by the dream. But I'm quickly able to collect my nerves and fall back asleep. 
I go to work the next day, still feeling slightly uncomfortable. When I run into the patient from the dream, she tells me about a funny dream she had the night before. In her dream, I came to her room and told her to meet me in the gym. Apparently, this was real enough for her to get out of bed and begin riding her wheelchair toward the PT gym. The nursing staff, who at night aren't the most professional people in the world, yell at her and tell her to go back to her room. She did state that she had this dream and started toward the gym a little after 2am. Unfortunately, I did not check the time when I woke from my own dream. I've written this off as an extremely odd coincidence, but it's the only thing that has ever made me question my own lack of belief. Four, just want to mention this at the beginning before you get turned off by the fact that I was a child when this happened. While yes, it did happen in my childhood, and it can happen to have false memories due to being young. I keep reassuring every now and then that this did in fact happen by asking my parents about it. It is nowhere near a false memory. My parents experienced the exact same thing as me, and I kept talking to them about it at least once a year because... I just found it to be such an abnormal experience. This one happened to me in my childhood, and I know that it happened because my parents heard it as well, and even felt the urge to investigate what it was. Thank God I had someone with me to prove that I'm not crazy. So anyway, around 20 years ago, when I was still a child, my father used to always use his basement stairs, which made this squeaking noise. Day in, day out. I heard it at least once when he went up there. I liked it for some odd reason. It became part of my everyday life because I heard it so often. Squeak, 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 squeak. Back then I still slept in the same room as my parents and one night we heard the basement stair steps. How was that possible? My father and my mom were in bed. And no, those weren't tiny steps. That was the exact same sound my father always made when he went up there. I would never confuse the sound he makes when he walks up those stairs with the one of another person. When my mom goes up those stairs, which was rare, I would instantly know because it sounded drastically different. It must have been a big something, not just a cat or anything like that, it was big. Like I said, it sounded exactly like the steps of my dad. Naturally, my father thought it was a burglar, so he decided to investigate, only to find out there was nothing up there at all. Nothing. In fact, he reported still being able to hear the steps when he was looking at them. The sound came literally out of nowhere. What the fuck? We never found out what was behind this, but it sure as hell was an amazing event in my life. I wish more stuff like this would happen. It is truly fascinating to me. I wish I had been older back then when this happened. I would have gladly helped my father with investigating in the basement. Maybe we could have found something together. Oh well. Does anyone have similar sound out of nowhere experiences? 5. When I was a child, a weird occurrence happened to me that is stuck with me so clearly to this day, I can recall in vivid detail the happenings of this day. I have always been intrigued with notions of time travel, time lapses, parallel universes, etc. Movies like Back to the Future are the core motivation for this fascination, and I always wondered about it. I have always been a religious person, so time travel, time lapses, and that sort of ideology greatly conflicts with mainstream theology, so it is believed. But where I find the loophole is in this belief. That God can see all, past, present, and future at the same time. Not only omnipotent, but omnipresent. So if you have an open mind, essentially, these things are possible. But that's for another discussion. I was about four or five, and trust me, I do not have many memories of my childhood. I suppose I remember some things vaguely. Sporadic images of events here and there. I do feel I must have made this known, that when I do remember and revisit the memories, I have felt it is almost as if I see them in a third-person perspective. Like a window opening up in my mind, 
and I can peer in and see these events and everything I felt and thought for these brief moments I relive entirely. Though most of my childhood memories are incomplete, this one event that I will recount is the most solid memory I have as a child of what I can now safely label as a glitch in the matrix. It was in the evening, and the sun was almost close to completely setting, and who I believe to be my parents and I were seeing pictures from an album recounting stories of when and where they were taken. It was something we normally did as a family. It was our thing to pass some time and bond. It wasn't new, except for the fact that this time, we were outside in the back porch, sitting in those metal rocking chairs Mexican families like us tend to have. I remember all of a sudden, as if there was a slight pause, like a sudden silence, just like that, it was completely dark out. Our backyard had a canal that went through to drain excess water and direct it to wherever the city wanted it. So at times, that entire canal would have fog over it and seep onto our backyard. I remember all of a sudden I'm alone in the back porch. My parents have seemingly left me unattended in the backyard and went off to sleep. I don't even remember them going back into the house. They just vanished. By the time I gathered my four-year-old consciousness, I decided to try the front door of the house. As I was turning the corner of the left side of the house, I looked back towards the canal. The lights of a nearby used car lot were brightly shining, and through that and the fog, I saw a figure moving around. It was like a shadow man made of circular, almost animated appendages. His arms were cylindrical, a round head, rounded body, and cylindrical type legs. I could see his head move side to side as if he was observing me. I saw no facial features. He then waved his cylindrical-like arms as if waving to me to come to him. I turned around and started walking faster to the front of the house. As I looked back, I could see this being starting to follow me. Instead of standing in the front door in the dark, I felt that being in the light was the best thing for me as to standing in the front door with no lights. The back porch lights were on, so I went around the house and kept turning the corners. I would see that shadow man following me, but not chasing me as if trying to capture me. I reached the back porch again and reached the safety of the spotlight of the back porch and started to hit the glass sliding door frantically because it was somehow locked from the inside. I could see the shadow man peeking from the corner and he started to book it to the safety of the fog in the canal. Finally, my father appeared and my mother was behind him, both with a bewildered look on their face, asking why I was outside in the wee hours of the morning. I told them that they were outside with me looking at the picture album and demanded to know why they didn't take me inside with them when they were done. My mother approached me and told me that I must have been dreaming, because they never did these things with me earlier that evening. I rebuttaled, but was told I must have been sleepwalking or something. But I know it was no dream. If that was the case, how did I manage to lock the door from the inside as I was outside? Why was the album still outside? Why did I have my normal clothes on from the day, and not my sleeping clothes on? So many things didn't line up. I didn't mention the rounded shadow man following me, as I figured they wouldn't believe me. I never saw that shadow figure again, but every time I see fog, I am reminded of the encounter I had with it. I assume the glitch caused me to lose a good amount of time, because it was close to 1am when I was let back in. As for my parents, now they don't even remember that night they let me back in. It only exists in my memory. The next one happened to me this morning. Oddly enough, it involves fog too. I'm a truck driver for Ryder, and I was driving. My co-driver was asleep in the sleeper berth. We were heading to Terre Haute, Indiana. Northbound on 55. Right now, weather is unpredictable, so it's not uncommon to see fog, rain, etc., when passing Tennessee, Alabama, and all the southern states. Suddenly, fog built up very rapidly, 
and I started to slow down and began changing lanes. I saw a swift truck on one shoulder, and as it is customary, you switch lanes for these trucks. It was on the right shoulder with the emergency lights on, and I could see it through the fog. As I started to take the turn, the fog cleared up, and I saw the swift truck clearly with the name Swift on the side of the trailer. I passed it up and went back into the slow lane. Suddenly the fog came back up and I saw what I thought was another left turn. And at the same distance I saw the same swift truck with its emergency lights on and the fog disappearing almost frame by frame as it did before. I swear it was the same stretch I had encountered before. Could that be glitches in the matrix and could fog have something to do with it? Let me know what you guys think. Hey everyone, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Glitch in the Matrix Stories, Episode 40. Big thanks to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Hope the audio sounds okay on this, I had to do a, a reset on my computer. I've been having some troubles, uh, just minor little problems, uh, irritating things that, you know, you can kind of temporarily fix by restarting the computer. But I was, uh, I was able to narrow it down to being a, a software issue rather than a hardware issue. And uh, I decided, okay, the only thing I haven't tried is to do like a refresh on my, my computer, uh, which has actually fixed most of the problems I was getting. Uh, it does, however, mean when you do a refresh, it keeps all your files, so all your files and everything, there, all your work and everything, sir. But it does delete all your programs. So that kind of led to having to reinstall everything and reset everything. So uh, the audio settings aren't exactly the way they were before. But I think they might actually be a little bit better. It sounds okay to my ears, so hopefully it'll be okay to you guys as well. Okay, and with that, I think I'm going to head off for now. So, until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.